Warning, this video involves harmful chemicals and flammable substances. Be extremely cautious when handling anything you see here. Hello everyone. In this video, several members of the Science Madness community have worked together to explore possible ways to make fire without matches. Several methods will be shown here, and for each a description will be provided, as well as a link to the person who filmed the video. I hope you enjoy our work. First, let's look at some examples of the powerful oxidizing agent manganese heptoxide. To the beaker, potassium permanganate is added. Concentrated sulfuric acid is dripped on to make permanganic acid, which is instantly dehydrated to the anhydride manganese heptoxide, which will appear as either a green or red oily liquid. Uh, manganese heptoxide is one of the strongest oxidizing agents known. and will light ethanol on fire simply on contact. A thick brown soot of manganese dioxide is observed. When sodium hypochlorite and hydrochloric acid are mixed, chlorine is produced. Calcium carbide is added and reacts with water to produce acetylene. When chlorine and acetylene react, carbon and hydrogen chloride are made. This reaction is very exothermic and is particularly interesting when done completely underwater. In a similar reaction, a turpentine-soaked towel is dropped on the chlorine. They react to form hydrogen chloride and carbon. But let's just drop it in and see what happens. Nice! <laughs> sugar can be a great fuel for these reactions. Here we see sugar burned with two oxyhalide salts. First, potassium chlorate, and second, sodium chlorite. Both times the reactions are initiated with concentrated sulfuric acid. In a coffee scoop, roughly equal amounts of sugar and potassium chlorate are mixed thoroughly. To that, a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid are added. Nice. Dry vitamin C is flammable and self ignites when mixed with very reactive sodium chloride. <laughs> Self 
Some mixtures can be initiated simply with a drop of water. First, the reaction between finely divided aluminum and iodine is shown. The reaction starts slow, but is very beautiful. Be careful, though. The purple iodine vapor coming off is especially dangerous and will stain everything. Another mixture that can be triggered by the addition of water is ammonium nitrate, zinc, and sodium chloride. Both of these mixtures are very unstable and should only be made immediately before use. So now we'll start it with just a couple of drops of water. Well, it actually looks like one drop was enough. This mix is commonly called negative X. You can see the zinc oxide product formed, and it feels very hot. Nitrile gloves are the choice for most chemists, however they will react violently with red fuming nitric acid. This demonstration shows how a few drops will start a bright fire when added to a nitrile glove in a test tube. Magnesium silicide can be made by strongly heating magnesium metal and sand in a test tube. When reacted with slightly diluted hydrochloric acid, the product is pyrophoric silane gas. The reaction forms silane, a pyrophoric gas. On contact with oxygen, it burns, producing silicon dioxide. Shortly after glycerin is poured on potassium permanganate, a reaction occurs that is so hot it is sometimes used to start thermite. When the smallest amount of water is present, magnesium and silver nitrate form a violent flash powder. Here, silver nitrate is put on a piece of aluminum foil with a small amount of water. Magnesium powder is poured on. The reaction completely obliterates the aluminum foil. Other, more exotic mixtures produce great results as well. Here, a mixture of very fine aluminum, potassium nitrate, and red phosphorus are touched to a test tube full of chlorine. The reaction between the phosphorus and the chlorine provides the activation energy required to set the powder off. Look closely for beautiful smoke rings.
Per iotic acid is a solid at room temperature and a strong oxidizing agent. Here, red phosphorus is dropped onto it. Next, a pea-sized piece of periotic acid is added to 20% hydrazine hydrate solution. Phosphine, or phosphorus trihydride, is a toxic gas. When injected into an inverted test tube full of chlorine underwater, they react violently, producing hydrogen chloride and phosphorus trichloride. As the products are consumed by the water, water is drawn up the test tube. The violent reaction between sodium hydroxide and nitromethane is well known. However, a more violent reaction occurs between nitromethane and sodium oxide. Here, nitromethane is poured onto a small mound of sodium oxide. Thank you for watching. For a more in-depth analysis of each demonstration, including links, and for links to the video authors, please see the video description.